Welcome back. So I've added a new test that fails in this version, git tag version 05. This version, we're going to say that we want, now we have a course array available, but we actually want to say whenever we add three courses, we also expect there to be three p tags. And what's a p tag? Well, it's just a tag on the page that kind of displays a text, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, again, this is not going to be a test course, but I just want to kind of give you an overview of how I've done this. I'm saying I want to do like we've done before. Before I want to start out by getting the native uh, element right here that we need. Then I'm going to do an uninit on the component like we did up here. That means that now the course is initi initiated. That should happen when we actually do the real production code, right? It's doing an ng on it. In it. Um, then we call something called detect changes, which is actually going to make sure that this init has been run properly. Okay, so this is kind of a way for me to trigger and refresh the UI. Right, And then we're going to create a course array inside the component that has some information. And then we're going to do the tech changes again to kind of force another refresh of the UI. Because that's what Angular does. Whenever you change something, it'll make a UI refresh. And then the end here, I'm just saying, I expect now that whatever I, the code I've compiled now, the HTML code, should have three p tags available. That should be true. And right now that fails because, of course, we don't have p, three p tags available right now. So if I look, it doesn't have any p tags available right now. So that's we're going to do this using an ng4. So step one is we're going to go into our HTML code. And here I'm going to add a new line of code that is very simple here. This is how we make loops inside Angular. Every Angular we've done pretty much, at least since Angular 2 and forward. So we're going to use, this is a p tag. Right, it's just for a line of information inside HTML. And then we're going to do an ng4, meaning I'm here I'm going to use an Angular command to actually get a list of items. And the list is going to be for each of the courses that we made inside our array of courses. We're going to get a single course, and that single course we're going to paint that title or put that title inside the p tag. So this guy right here references to this guy. This guy right here references to this guy inside the TS file, right? So that's an array. So that's how you can kind of make a list of items inside Angular that can be passed through the system. Now, when I save this, I actually passed my test as well because now it shows three p tags. And just to make it absolutely perfect for you guys to see, let's try and go into our component and just pretty much copy this guy right here and add that inside our actual TS code. So now we'll have um, the list of courses posted directly here, right? So let's see, this will still run. And then let's try and see the actual page now has three different p tags. Let me show you the p tag here. There we go, that's a p tag right here. And here's another p tag, it's this guy and the last p tag, right? So we just added three different p tags. And we even added a unit test that makes sure that that will actually be expected and encouraged. That's all for this lesson. Now you guys know how you can use the ng4, meaning that we can go in on any element we make and actually make for each of the courses, we're going to add a p tag. For each of the courses, we're going to add an h3, h4, h whatever tag, even a component, we'll look into that later. And then what we want to pull out of that, as soon as we've done in the ng4, we can use this course anywhere inside that tag, any way you want to, even inside properties. That course is now available not courses, but the single course. Remember the let here, because we want to define that this is going to be a variable uh, locally of the type course. Uh, sorry, of the name course. That's all for this lesson. Now we have another successful test. Hope this helps you out with the tests, but I am going to start moving away from tests because you guys can do your own unit testing later if you want to. That's all for this lesson. Have fun.